Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on quantum statistics. This is video number 43, and I'm going to begin a series of sub videos on the applications of quantum statistics. So, in order to do this, I need to discuss spherical coordinates, which is what I'm going to do in this video. So, I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So, spherical coordinates probably scared the life out of you. They certainly did for many a year, scared the life out of me. So what I'm going to hopefully show you is that there's nothing particularly to be scared about. There is nothing out of the ordinary really with the uh, with this spherical or polar coordinates. It's pretty straightforward. So what I've drawn here is a three-dimensional rectangular coordinate system. And what I've drawn is this green vector, which is my vector in three-dimensional rectangular space. I'm going to give it the placeholder R, the vector R. So what we're going to try and do is go from i hat, j hat, k hat to r hat, theta hat, phi hat. Now, you might ask yourself, what does that mean? I'll speak about that in a moment. First of all, let's define some angles. The angle between our vector r and the z-axis, I'm going to call it theta. If you pro project your r vector down onto the xy plane, so here's the xy plane, its projection I'm going to call A. Okay, I'm not going to give it a vector, I'm going to just call it A for the moment. But the angle between A and the x-axis is I'm going to call the the uh, angle phi, or e, that's phi, correct. So you have theta between the, the vector and the z-axis and phi between its projection onto the xy plane and the x-axis. Now, note that the projection of R onto the xy plane can also be drawn up here between the z-axis and the vector itself. So in rectangular coordinates we would say that the vector R is equal to we we'll say xi hat plus yj hat plus zk hat. If it's we'll say you know we could put it that way or you could say R is equal to a sub x i hat plus a sub y j hat plus a sub z k hat, where we take the derivatives or the gradient of it there. Now why, why does that make sense? Well, because a sub x is the rate of change of your vector in the x direction. a sub y is the rate of change of your vector in the y direction, and so on. So it should make sense that we take the derivatives or we talk about the gradient in, in general. Now let's come up with some relationships between the rectangular coordinates and the spherical coordinates. So if we look at this triangle up here. Using Pythagoras, we, or well, uh, using a small bit of trigonometry, we can see that we can write a as equal to r sine theta. Using Pythagoras, of course, we have x squared plus y squared is equal to is equal to a squared. Okay, that's this triangle down here. x squared plus y squared is equal to a squared. So x is going to be equal to a times the cosine of phi. y is going to be equal to a times the sine of phi. And z is going to be equal to r times the cosine of theta. Okay, that's just pretty basic trigonometry. So if we put all those together, we in other words we sub in for a, we find that x is going to be equal to r cos phi sine theta y is equal to r I'm going to keep phi, sine phi sine theta and z is equal to r cos theta okay so these transformations are what allow us to go from rectangular coordinates into spherical coordinates pretty straightforward so in general, our vector was a, we'll say, and it was a sub x in the i-hat direction. Sorry, I have to notice, by the way, this a, that should have been, that should have been a like that. But anyway, so it's, in general, it's a sub x in the i-hat, it's a sub y in the j-hat, and it's a sub k, or a sub z in the k-hat direction. So in our spherical coordinates then, we can rewrite this, that the vector a is equal to a sub r in the r hat direction 
plus a sub theta in the theta hat direction plus a sub phi in the phi hat direction. So we now have what x, y, and z are in terms of uh, theta and phi and r. But we now need to get these unit vectors, phi hat, theta hat, and r hat. So how do we go about doing that? Is that going to be difficult? And the answer is it, it seems so, but in actual fact it turns out to be very straightforward and very easy. And the reason is as follows. So just let's just recap. We have that, excuse me, we have that x is equal to or cos phi sine theta, y is equal to r sine phi sine theta, and sine phi sine theta, and we know that z is equal to r cos theta. All right? Now, what is the definition of a unit vector? Well, a unit vector has direction only, but a, dire, sorry, direction only in a magnitude of one. So we would define, let's say, I don't know, um, c hat is the vector c divided by the magnitude of the vector c. So that means that r hat is equal to the, the we'll say, a sub r divided by the magnitude of a sub r, like that or where a is the general vector of theta hat is equal to um, a sub theta divided by the magnitude of a sub theta. Okay, that should be pretty straightforward. I'm going to, of course, say that a sub uh, phi is a is, a, a, sorry, phi hat is a sub phi divided by the magnitude of that. So we need to get these partial derivatives. Okay, so let's go ahead and do those. So the partial derivatives are going to be as follows. So we said a moment ago that a, I'm going to call a my general vector. So it's going to be a sub r in the r hat direction plus a sub theta in the theta hat direction plus a sub phi in the phi hat, that's phi hat direction, like that. Okay, but we know what x, y, and z are. So we need to get, at the moment, at the moment, a is equal to or cos phi sine of theta i hat plus or the sine of phi the sine of theta j hat and it's also or cos theta k hat all right so let's go ahead and get the partial derivatives for the third time i've said it <laughs> still haven't done it so a sub r is going to be equal to cos phi sine uh, cos phi sine theta i hat plus sine theta sine phi j hat plus cos theta k hat a sub theta is equal to r cos phi cos theta plus r cos theta sine phi j hat minus r sine theta k hat. And finally, a sub phi is equal to minus r times the sine of phi in the i hat direction. We have plus r the cos of phi in the uh, k hat direction. So in order to get the unit vectors, we need to divide a sub bar by the magnitude of the vector a sub bar. We need to divide a sub theta by the magnitude of the vector a sub theta, and a sub phi by the magnitude of the vector a sub phi. Now, look, you can do it if you, if you want yourself. You'll see they're pretty straightforward. For example, here, okay, if you look at it, just square that out. It's going to be r squared sine squared phi plus r squared cos squared phi. We know that cos squared plus sine squared is 1, so the magnitude is going to be the square root of r squared, which is r. Okay, so the magnitude, the magnitude of a sub phi is equal to r. And if you look at this one here, or let's say we square it, okay, so if we, if we factorize for r squared cos squared theta, we're going to have this cos squared plus sine squared phi, which is 1. So we're going to have r squared cos squared theta 
plus r squared sine squared theta, with the magnitude of that is also going to be r. Like that. And I'm going to tell you the magnitude of a sub r simply is equal to 1. Okay? So that means the unit vectors are all of these divided by the divided by r here and divided by r here. So this means I'm going to put I'm going to re rearrange these. So this is r hat, this is theta hat, this is phi hat. If I divide by r, and these are our unit vectors. Okay, so I hope that makes sense to you. And finally, I'd just like to talk about the uh, infinitesimal volume elements. Because you'll need this if you're doing electrodynamics. Now, I know we're not doing electrodynamics, but I'm hoping this video can be useful to people other than those studying quantum. So let's say if we move in the r direction. Okay, so there's our vector r, and we extend onto it in a direction dr. So what is the change in length in the r direction, the l sub r? Well, of course, it's simply going to be dr. All right, simple. So this is the infinitesimal displacement in the r hat direction. Grant, simple. Next, what about if, so this is, we'll say, the, uh, that's d l sub r. What about dl sub theta? So an infinitesimal change in the theta direction. Well, we have r. There's our vector r. But we're now after moving in a, a direction theta like this. Okay, there's d theta. So theta is small. So this in general would be r sine theta. But theta is small, so it's approximately r theta. Or it's approximately r d theta. So we can see dl sub theta is equal to r d theta. Okay, like that. That's the infinitesimal change in the theta direction. And finally, the slightly more difficult one is the infinitesimal change in the phi direction. So, first of all, if we have a, a regular rec or excuse me triangle, let's say like this, and we, here's our vector r. There's our vector r, and here's the angle theta like that. I don't know if you might be here. Here's some fireworks in the background. Somebody's having a bit of crack. So, just by basic trigonometry, this is r sine of theta, like that, or sine theta. Now, let's introduce this, let's introduce phi. So, let's say that here, this is d phi. So, it joins like this, and the width of this here is clearly going to be r times the sine of theta times d phi. And that's going to be d l phi. Okay? Great stuff. Now, a volume element, the volume element, the volume element, say d tau, is going to be dl sub r, dl sub theta, dl sub phi, and that's going to be equal to r squared sine theta dl dr d theta. Okay? I'm sure you've seen that loads of times. Then, what about dA, which is a surface element? But it depends on what, what element you're using, which, which, what is constant. If you're integrating a radius constant, say over a sphere, for example, then you're going to have dA is going to be dL theta, dL phi, and it's going to be R constant, like that. So it's going to be R squared times the sine of theta times d theta, d phi, R hat. And what happens if you had the theta constant? So, for example, you're integrating over the xy plane, well, dA is going to be dL sub r, dL sub phi, and it's going to be uh, theta hat. Like I said, theta is constant. So it's going to be r, dr, d phi, theta hat, like that. So there are some, there's two of these, the area elements you have, and this is the volume element in spherical coordinates. So, that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also visit universityphysicstutorial.com.